Okay, so the point of this video is to go over a robot that I thought was going to be easy and then turned out to be not so easy. Then at the last possible moment, we figured it out. Or maybe we didn't. Is that two behind the veil? context from the narrator. I used to live by a river when I was a kid. I grew up playing around with a bunch of rocks and I got really good at skipping rocks. Here, check this out. Nice. All right, but uh, I would also like to stack rocks because I thought balancing stuff looked pretty cool. And the ones that look the coolest are the ones that are just barely stable. Because there's something really delicate about finally piecing together a tower. It's a sculpture. It's a statically stable sculpture of rocks. But that's like not that cool because it's just a pile of rocks. Um, we're gonna be talking about dynamically stable systems. I wanna make one of these things because they're awesome and also because I want one. This type of robot uses a reaction wheel to stay balanced, unlike rocks, which just use rocks. Speaking of things that rock, our sponsor Bamboo Labs sent us these printers. So we're gonna talk about them more in the video. Oh, yo, Swap, check out that the Bamboo Labs A1C just came in. And all this filming? Yeah, dude. Uh, oh, I should have thought about that. Okay, to keep it real with everybody, this video is past due. It's past due for us, it's past due for our sponsors, it's past due for uh, y'all, everyone. Um, and it was supposed to be in the Fast Flavored Robot series, which means that I thought that I could do this in a weekend. But here's what I had after 48 hours. Feast your eyes upon perfect, stable balancing as long as my hand is there. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! All right, be honest. I had you for a second, right? <laughs> okay, it right now balances about as well as a pile of rocks. We need to go over some terms just so that everyone's on the same page, like what is a reaction wheel and why do we need to put it in a cage? First off, the whole basic principle of these robots is the reactionary force. From physics, you might remember the saying like, you know, the equal and opposite reaction thing. If we're talking about in a straight line, if we're trying to launch an apple at a couple hundred miles an hour, it's going to resist the like us pushing it to accelerate it because it has some mass. However much we have to push it to accelerate it, it's going to push back with an equal force, a reactionary force, some might say. Now, as engineers, it's our goal to exploit physics as much as possible. We're like, okay, what if we had like a contraption? We love contraptions. And we could launch enough apples with enough force to, uh, I don't know, maybe control our position in space or something. Okay, neat, but how does that connect to a wheel? Because we're talking about a reaction wheel robot. But just like things resist accelerating in a straight line, things also resist rotating. Whatever torque we apply to start rotating it, it's also going to apply an equal torque back. And for our hypothetical contraption, that's kind of sick. We can just keep spinning it faster and faster and get that reaction torque that we wanted. With most systems, the reaction force comes with some mass ejection. You lose the apples, but with the reaction wheel, we still have the wheel. But uh, that was a lot of talk just to say that we put a motor on a square. And the idea is if the robot tips this way, then we need to spin the wheel this way and that will create a reaction torque that will correct the robot's position and if we do that a whole bunch um, really fast we should be able to balance on our corner which would be crazy i'm building all of this with the robot platform that we designed from scratch that's supposed to make robots easy to build and this is one of the projects that um yeah it made it easy to build we just kind of plugged everything into that board that's the MotorGo axis. And all the prints were super easy too. We just dragged and dropped all the STL files into the Bamboo Studio and sent it over the internet. And it configured all of the filament changes for us and even put in pauses at different layer lines. So we were able to embed these copper rings into the 3D prints to give them more mass. You know, I'm watching the video back and I'm realizing some people might be wondering why are you 3D printing everything? And to answer that, I mean like I love making stuff out of cardboard, but it just doesn't look that good. And I love making stuff out of metal too, but it takes forever. And so like 3D printing is that great middle ground. It's really fast, you can make it look nice, everyone wins. So with those tools in my belt, you know, I really got to spend all the thinky time on the important stuff, like why the heck the robot was doing that? 
All right, let's talk about controls. Now that last robot, the one that was flopping around, uh, was running a controller that we didn't really expect to work. I didn't expect it to be that bad, but I didn't expect it to work. Um, we just tried it for due diligence. It was called a bang bang controller. Bang bang controllers are essentially whenever you can only turn things on or off. Bang bang controllers are all over the place. Like when you walk into a room, you're like, hey, it's too dark in here. And then you turn on the lights. Or actually maybe a better example is like your air conditioner. It only turns on or off, but it can control the temperature of the room. And that's usually a bang bang controller. Sometimes that's the best you got and sometimes that's all you need. But something was telling me I wasn't gonna be good enough for this. So the next simplest controller that we could get to would be a simple PID controller. And I've gone over PID controllers a bunch before. You should check out MATLAB's official like channel for they have like really good PID stuff. But what you need to know right now is like the core concept of PID. Essentially, we separate the controls into three pieces. How far are we from our goal? How long have we not been at our goal? And how fast are we getting to our goal? And then we answer the questions separately and we decide how much we care about those answers. And then we add them back at the end. If your system works like that, that is, that's a linearly controllable system. I did that with the wobbler and I built a little control panel so that we could change how much we care about each of those questions. And we can actually get it to balance for a little bit. Actually, with just a simple PID controller, this I mean, I got this going for at least 45 minutes. At some point or another, it eventually collapses and it does fall. So it's not forever, but a pretty long time. Why do you think it can't balance anymore? Well, it's because the motor's hitting its maximum speed. We can only get reaction torque out of accelerating the mass. That's where it started to get a little tricky. For a while, I was thinking, uh, it looks so close. Like maybe if I just tune the controller better, it can balance indefinitely. Like maybe it'll just work itself out. Okay, now we're increasing the D gain. Try to make it of 0.3. And I think we'd do better if the velocity could bump back to be negative. That way we wouldn't have this position creep. It doesn't look like it's getting less wobbly. It looks like it might be getting more wobbly. Now this is interesting. But after a while, I'm pretty sure that wasn't going to work. And then I was like, well, okay, if max speed is the problem, maybe I just need a motor with the higher max speed. And that also did not work. Ultimately, I came to the conclusion that I needed to try uh, something else. And then I had my first good idea ever. Basically, I was thinking if one PID controller almost worked, maybe two will be better. Okay, so the second PID controller is a little bit different from the first one. The first one outputs motor torque whenever the robot tips over. That's pretty straightforward because if we tip over, we want to fix that tipping. The second PID controller dares to ask the question, if we keep spinning the motor up and up and up, maybe that means that we're not aiming at the right balance point at all. It really wasn't obvious to me if this made sense because these are very linked. It was kind of like circular logic, but here's how I came to it in a logical way. Okay, so here's what I was thinking. If our motor is spinning and we need it to slow down, solution, slow the motor down. Oh, problem, you know, we have to apply a torque to, to slow it down. And so then that shifts the robot because the reaction torque, this time not the one that we wanted, uh, throws the robot over and unbalances it. Solution, let's first unbalance this way. And then whenever we stop the motor, it'll get kicked back to balanced. Problem again, in order to tip the robot this way, we have to spin the motor up even faster than it already is, which is difficult. Solution again, it takes money to make money. What goes around comes around. No, I tried it and it works. It took a good amount of searching for the right PID numbers, but it does stabilize seemingly forever. That was pretty cool. And I should have made the, that the end of the video, but instead, like, why is it so wiggly? I just want it to relax. I don't want this to be a source of anxiety in my life. And no pun intended, but there was a balance between how calm you wanted the controller to be and how well it could reject disturbances, like being poked. But I wanted both. I wanted I wanted it to be still and good at that. So let's talk about those wiggles. Um, usually when I see like vibratey things that you just can't tune out no matter how long you play with the PID parameters, it's usually a sign you need to buckle down and do a little bit of math 
and analysis on the problem. And that's hard because, I mean, definitely a younger me would have made the robot a little bit bigger and hoped that that would just, you know, make all the problems go away. But that was two whole weeks ago, and making a bigger robot didn't just make all the problems go away. But I do have to say, with the Bamboo Labs A1 printer, all of the 3D printing problems did go away. This robot came out beautifully, and I ended up printing a bunch of other fun stuff with the Bamboo Labs phone app called Bamboo Handy. It's like a bunch of community curated files that you can just press one button and then stuff like this pops up on your build plate. I love it. Thank you once again to our sponsors, Bamboo Labs. Check out their A1 printer and check out the robot's new ring. Because it's a lot bigger, it has a lot more rotational inertia. So the robot gets to spin a lot slower, making it quiet, which is cool, but it's still wiggly. And I was actually starting to lose sleep trying to fix this behavior. Here. I'm really tired, but I'm kind of obsessed right now. And so I tried throwing my mechanical engineering degree at it. But that didn't do anything. And so left with literally no other option, I decided to try a little bit of math. And the point of the math is going to be to make it so that this robot doesn't have to rely on a PID controller to do every single thing. If we could more accurately describe the physics of what's happening to the robot, then we should be able to come up with a better solution than the PID controller. And the first idea I had was, well, let's look at how far we've tipped as a change in gravitational potential energy. And let's look at the velocity that the robot is tipping at as a kinetic energy. And if we add those energies up, and we dump it equivalently into the reaction wheel, maybe they'll cancel out and we'll get closer to balanced than just relying on the PID controller. And we can actually still keep the PID controller, but we'll just put it really small to fix all of the little tiny calculation errors that we probably made. Now our control system is getting quite complicated, but after tuning the new parameters and tuning them some more, then this is starting to look like what we want to see. It's not there yet though. See, this looks like it's not going to be stable. Aw oh, man, but I don't know if you realize, that looked very similar to the stuff that we were dealing with the first time around, where the robot would balance, but then once our wheel hit its maximum speed, it wouldn't be able to speed up anymore and it would fall over. So we just had to tune the second PID loop a little bit more to change our balance point that we're aiming at so that we can slow the wheel down. Now we're cooking. We finally did it. That's, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even look like it's moving. That's mesmerizing with a little bit better lighting so you can see it. This one is using a gimbal motor and gimbal motors are really good at slow speeds. So this one's very stable. I can switch this out for a drone motor and this lets us have bigger disturbances like holding it in my hand. And then finally, here's a demo of showing what happens if you build up a bunch of speed and the second PID loop will slowly kill that speed from the reaction loop. I wanted to stop and give a big appreciation to all of the Patreon members. Thank you guys for supporting us. I love putting out this type of content that can teach people and hopefully some of you guys try to build some of your own reaction wheels. I think I'm gonna keep going with some reaction wheel content, uh, not immediately, but like very soon. Uh, this is a lot of fun for me to like dust off the control skills and it's definitely a good test for our MotoGo access as well. I'm not done with this project yet. I mean, like I'm done because I need to publish this video and and like I wanna show what, what's happened this far in Bamboo Labs. Thank you for being patient with me. I actually really love working with Bamboo 3 printers those things are so nice it's a good product what do you want me to say if you guys want to learn how to build robots and stuff like this uh, obviously try subscribing first um, but if you're already subscribed and want to come hang out and build robots with us we have an amazing discord community i absolutely love our community in discord we're all encouraging each other to learn and build more robots so come check it out thank you for watching